Hi, I'm Ed Loftus. I'm at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'd like to talk to you today about a study we did. Um, this is a study about Crohn's disease, the natural history of the condition over time in a population-based cohort. Um, the reason we did this study was we were really trying to get at the issue, does Crohn's disease progress over time? Is it a chronic progressive destructive disease or is it a a, a mild uh, non-progressing disease. We use the resources of the Rochester Epidemiology Project um, to identify all patients with Crohn's disease who are residents of Olmsted County. These patients were diagnosed between 1970 and 2004 and they were followed through their medical records until approximately 2008. The reason why it's important to note we did this with the Rochester Epidemiology Project is that it's a true population-based cohort of patients. So there's no referral bias. There's always a concern when you see a study based on patients seen at the referral center that these, this might be skewed to a higher severity of disease, but this encompasses the entire severity. So when you're doing a natural history study, it's thought to be a much more pure uh, cohort, so to speak. We abstracted their medical records for development of complications of Crohn's disease, and this consists of either stricture, which had to be a fixed narrowing, often with pre-stenotic dilatation, often with obstructive symptoms, uh, or penetrating disease, and penetrating disease included fistula, abscess, or inflammatory mass or phlegmonous changes. And we calculated using actuarial methods the cumulative risk of developing an intestinal complication from the time of diagnosis. We then used a multivariate analysis, something called a proportional hazards regression or Cox regression, and the dependent variable was time to complication, and re we regressed backwards looking at baseline factors were there clinical or baseline factors that could predict uh, or were associated with time to intestinal complication. So I think there were three main findings in the study. First of all, we found that even at the time of diagnosis, about 19% of patients had already developed an intestinal complication, roughly 5% strictures and 15% penetrating complications. And at 20 years out from diagnosis, approximately half of patients had developed an intestinal complication. It's important to note that they developed a complication because fully three quarters of these patients within six months of developing an intestinal complication required a surgical resection. So that's the second major finding. And then the third major finding, among the patients who didn't have an intestinal complication, at the time of diagnosis, the risk factors for developing intestinal complication were ileal disease, ileocolonic disease, upper gastrointestinal involvement, and perianal disease at diagnosis was of borderline significance. The other interesting uh, note was that patients who were started on 5-ASA or sulfasalazine in the first 90 days of disease were actually more likely to develop an intestinal complication twice as likely than patients who did not start those medications. So why are these findings important? I think it does confirm that such patients are likely to progress. Uh, in other words, Crohn's disease is a chronic destructive progressive disease and there's an opportunity for intervention. If we ever hope to alter the natural history of the condition, we have to intervene earlier, um, and we might want to consider intervening in patients that have uh, perianal disease at diagnosis, but more importantly, small bowel involvement at diagnosis. These are the ones who are much more likely to progress to stricture or fistula, and we have to intervene early.